What's going on everybody? Kenny Bomb is in the building and Ed Boon has confirmed that many characters will be added to Mortal Kombat 1. He also confirmed that we will be getting Mortal Kombat 1 Aftermath just like we got with Mortal Kombat 11. Now I'm thinking with Mortal Kombat Aftermath we get three new characters added much like there was three new characters last time. I think we'll get Combat Pack 2 that runs us through 2025 and I think we'll get Combat Pack 3 that runs us through 2026. And I think that'll take us into the next Mortal Kombat game. Do we get Injustice next year? That's another topic for another day. But let's talk about this full Mortal Kombat 1 roster. Let's go ahead and start off with what we can expect to see first, and that is the three characters from Mortal Kombat 1's Aftermath. Now, two of these characters are very important to the Mortal Kombat universe, much like Liu Kang, Johnny Cage, and Sub-Zero, and I'm surprised they did not make it into the main story of this game. But we're going to start off with the first character being... Sonya Blade. That Mortal Kombat 1 roster is so critical. Well, the first Mortal Kombat 1's roster where we didn't have Melina, we didn't have Katana, we didn't even have Sindel, but who we did have was Sonya Blade, the first woman of Mortal Kombat. So to restart everything and remake this universe and leave Sonya Blade out of it, that's borderline criminal activity. So I think we gotta get Sonya Blade included in this universe story as soon as possible. Not only Sonya Blade, somebody else who's missing on this roster it's Jax. He's been our Mortal Kombat black guy for the longest. Now, Garrus has taken his place. But, Sonya Blade and Jax work so well together. Probably even better in the movies than they do in the games. But, I love to see how these characters pair up with each other. I just want them to move away from the Special Forces stuff. If Rain can be a mage now, if Melina can be the queen, Liu Kang is the god, I think we can find something else for these characters to do besides making them Special Forces. I just never really liked the military and gun stuff in Mortal Kombat. Have we ever seen this one of these characters die from a gunshot? I don't think so, so let's get rid of it. Now, Johnny Cage has been pretty flirty with Katana, and we've already seen Liu Kang refer to Katana from another universe as his, so Liu Kang can't take up all the Katana. So I say pair Johnny Cage and Katana up together. That way we can pair Jax and Sonya up together finally. And then we can mix Jackie Briggs and Cassie Cage as one character and have something more interesting. Now, of course, Cassie Cage would lose that Johnny Cage personality, but maybe give Sonya some personality. I mean, I don't know. Wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, right? But I say we go with those two characters from Mortal Kombat Aftermath, but we got one left. And this is a character who been who was referred to so much in these character intros. She even has a role. She's even on the character select screen here. We have Countess Jade. Why would they call her Countess Jade if that wasn't going to play into the story somewhere in the future? So I think Jade is going to be included in Mortal Kombat 1 Aftermath. So we'll see her sooner rather than later. So that clears Mortal Kombat 1 Aftermath. Next, we move on to Combat Pack 2. And I know a lot of people don't like this, but there has to be guest characters. As we see in Combat Pack 1, we get three Mortal Kombat characters, we get three guest characters. I think it's going to play out the same way. Now, for Combat Pack 2, we're going to start off with a guest character, and this is one that I have wanted to see in Mortal Kombat for a long time. I thought it was going to happen in Mortal Kombat X, but it did not happen. Because it didn't happen in Mortal Kombat X, thought it was going to happen in Mortal Kombat 11, still didn't happen. Mortal Kombat 1 has to be where we finally see Michael Myers in a Mortal Kombat game. This is a Mortal Kombat character, more than Leatherface, I would say, on the same level as Jason, but... I can't believe we haven't seen Michael Myers in one of these games yet. I don't know if it happens this time. In fact, I'm going to speak it into existence. Michael Myers will be added to Mortal Kombat 1 in Combat Pack 2 or Combat Pack 3. The next fighter we have to reveal here is a character from Mortal Kombat, of course, and that character is Nightwolf. Maybe we don't even get animalities back in Mortal Kombat 1, but Nightwolf is a very popular character. I'm not mad he wasn't on the base roster, but I think a DLC spot is perfect for him. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one, and of course, this is going to be a guest character. Now, everybody complains because there's no ladies in these combat packs. I think this is the perfect woman to fill the combat pack. She fits the Mortal Kombat 1 vibe and you had the Joker in here last time so what better way to go than Harley Quinn I don't even think I need to say anything else great character she definitely fits in the universe and I think she's the most iconic character who's not from the Mortal Kombat universe that they can actually get in this game the next one we have on the list is Fujin now a lot of people are saying they think Fujin kind of got gender swapped because they're saying Raiden has a sister now 
So I would like to see them add Fujin in here. I want to see him in the Aftermath story as well, just to show people that that's not the case. I just don't see how Raiden giving up his god status would cause Fujin to turn into a human. Because if that's the case, then who's the god of wind at this point? But I don't know. I could be wrong. Fujin is a pretty man. Maybe he wanted to come to Earth to live as a woman. I don't know. I don't know. Anything is possible in 2024. Let's go ahead and move to the next character, which is somebody a lot of people want to see added to the game. And that is, what's his name? Ghostface. I almost called him Scream. Now, I understand these movies are back. The most recent one is apparently having some issues, but <sighs> this is just a person in a mask, y'all. It's just a person who sneaks up on people with a knife. <sighs> just a normal person who can go to jail if he gets caught. So do we want somebody like that fighting our Mortal Kombat characters? Personally, I don't. The only way I would want to see this happen is if it's actually a Mortal Kombat character under the mask. Like, Meat. Meat would be the perfect character to do this with. It'd be the perfect way to get him in this game as a cameo by having maybe Ghostface do a brutality and take his mask off like um, Peacemaker does and it's Meat underneath the mask. That would make sense to this character. So if you do something like that, 100%, I'm with it. Now this next one is definitely gonna be very, very vital because it has to be played in the right way. It's a character I wanna see on the roster, but not a character I wanna see in the story. That character is Noob Saibot. For a lot of reasons, because for one, Bihan does not need to die. Because if he does, who's going to be Sub-Zero? Do you put Kuali Yang back in that spot? No, he was born with some type of fire ability, so it can't be him. Do you get rid of Sub-Zero? Absolutely not. Do you make Sub-Zero have a baby with Serena? Fine, but that would take too long for him to grow up and become a mean, nasty grandmaster. Another reason is, if you're going to kill off one of these big characters to make Noob Cybot canon, I don't think you want to see that happen in the Aftermath story. I think that has to be saved for Mortal Kombat 13, because we know Smoke's not strong enough. There's no way he's going to be Noob Cybot. If you're going to kill off Qualiang or Bihan, it has to be a big event. And you can have big events in Aftermath, but that's just like a big story event that needs the biggest stage possible. So hopefully... If one of these characters have to die, they play it off right. Now we move on to Combat Pack 2. And I'm going to tell y'all right now, Combat Pack 2 is going to get pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and start with the first character. Aaron Black. My boy Aaron Black. He was having a good run here. Mortal Kombat 10. Great introduction. Mortal Kombat 11. He held up the momentum. I think it was important for them to get him on this Mortal Kombat 1 roster to kind of cement his place in this Mortal Kombat universe, but they didn't. You can always fix it, of course, down the line. I'm hoping to see him in the Aftermath story as well. At least make a cameo appearance, but I think we'll have him added by Combat Pack 3. So Aaron Black, definitely one of the big characters I want to see added here. Spoiler alert, I don't want Devora, but let's go ahead and continue. Next, we got Akuma. Mmm, now that is a big one. Capcom, y'all gotta stop playing. Y'all gotta stop playing. Stop running from the smoke. Just let these characters be in the Mortal Kombat universe. It's time for everybody to come out and play with Mortal Kombat. They can dress it up and make it look as clean as they want to, but at the end of the day, you look at Akuma and you can see this man is a killer. So, you let him go in Tekken, you gotta let Akuma come to Mortal Kombat 1, y'all. Stop being scared of the king and play in the court. Next up, we got Cabal. Now, Cabal is a character I feel like they didn't really nail after Mortal Kombat 3. He now, I understand story is very important, and we want to know what's going on with these characters, but when Cabal was in Mortal Kombat 3, maybe it's because I was a kid, but I felt like he was a monster. And as we got him in Mortal Kombat Deception moving forward, I feel like they humanized him. Even in Mortal Kombat 11, we got like a form of Cabal without the mask on, and I just don't like it. Killed the character for me, so... It is what it is. Maybe we can fix Cabal in this most recent universe. I'll just have to accept the fact that he is a man and he's not a monster. But, I mean, I do like the character. I like his moveset and I like everything else about him. It's just really his look and everything doesn't click with me when I know he's a man. It is what it is. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one where we have another crazy one, y'all, because we got 
Kazuya Mishima. Another man that you cannot fool me against, this man is a killer. So he does fit in the Mortal Kombat universe. Harada said, the cameo system is a great idea. It opens up a lot of possibilities, but you know what? If you're gonna add Akuma, if you're gonna add um, Kazuya, if you're gonna add Jin Kazama to this roster as a cameo, no thanks, keep him out of here. I don't want these characters doing fatalities on the Mortal Kombat characters if we can't do fatalities on them. Is it petty? It is what it is. I'd rather see him on the base roster or not at all. So, Mr. Harada, if you can't do that for us, cancel Christmas. No thank you. We don't need him. The next one we got here, Mortal Kombat character. Ooh, I just said I don't want Devorah on this roster, but she is on this list. And that is because even though I don't want her on the roster, they were building up something very crazy that I didn't like, but it was big. I love them building up new characters, much like Aaron Black, and they gave Devorah a lot. She killed a lot of big characters, so if she's one of the characters y'all wanna go with, let's keep it going. I don't gotta like everybody. Apparently, other people like her, so let's get Devorah on the roster so I can do some fatalities on her. And last, but most certainly not least, we gotta go with another guest character. Now, as y'all can see, usually they go with themes. The first, um, First combat pack had like a superhero theme with Omni-Man, Homelander, Peacemaker. Second one, we really don't got a theme. I guess we went horror there, but we got a DC uh, Comics representative as well. This one, we kind of went with a video game character. So I could put Jago in this spot from Killer Instinct. We can go with uh, Chung Lee, which I don't think is gonna happen. Or we can go with somebody else who would make the perfect fit, and that is Ryu Hayabusa. But apparently, Dead or Alive 7 was canceled, so that's probably not going to happen either. Last spot is blank. I need y'all to tell me in the comment section, who would y'all like to see guest spot on this Mortal Kombat 1 roster that you don't see on this board right now? But we are not done here yet, because if we're going to fill up this character select screen, we got to get rid of this blank dragon logo that's just slapped in the middle. And we're going to fill this in with a Mortal Kombat character. If we have one more Mortal Kombat character on this roster, who is it going to be? I say we go ahead and lock in Kronika. She was teased for Mortal Kombat 1. It was a bait, it was a switch, and she was gone. Never to be seen again. So I think we can get Kronika added into this game. She, I mean, we got all of these characters coming in from other universes. I know they said there's only one Kronika, but as we see at the end of Mortal Kombat 1, there's definitely always a loophole. Let me know what y'all think about this full roster for Mortal Kombat 1. Do me a favor and drop a like on this video and smash that subscribe button if you haven't already. Especially if you don't want to miss any updates on Mortal Kombat 1. Bomb Squad, Kendrick up. Let's get to that.